Good morning everyone. It's great to be with you. I'm Pastor John from Napanee Baptist Church and we were away for a few days. It's good to be back so we're starting up again. I hope you're keeping well and I hope you're staying strong in your walk with the Lord. We have done a series on the book of John, the Gospel of John, and now we're going to be starting a new book. We're going to be going into the book of Romans. And so we're just going to read a few verses, not very long passages each day, and then I'll comment and then we pray together. That's the format. And again, I always say once in a while, uh, if you don't have a church family and you would like to become a part of our church family here in Napanee, Ontario, uh, you can do that online or, of course, physically come and visit us. Uh, all the information is on the website. If you'd like to contact me, you can uh, feel free to do that. I would love to touch base and uh, get to know you. So we are into the book of Romans now. So if you can turn there to Romans chapter 1. And we're just going to read verses 1 to 7. Let's read together. It says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart, for the gospel of Christ. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets and the holy scriptures regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and through the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we received grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. Verse 6, And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we just want to focus in on a few things here. Uh, I really want to just focus in on, on verse 7, really. To all, where Paul says, to all in Rome who are called, or who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. That's what God does. He loves us, and then he calls us, and he chooses us. And he draws us to himself. And yes, we receive him, we accept him, but he is the one who is doing the prep work. He is the one who is calling us and choosing us and loving us. He loves us first. Here in his love, First John says, here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So God initiates the relationship with us and he calls us to himself. And then Paul says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So these, there are two separate things here. So the first thing is Paul is saying how we come to Christ we are loved by God. We are called of God. He draws us to himself. And then we are saved. We're born again. We not start a new life in him. And then God gives us his grace and his peace continually. That's what sustains us. That's what keeps us going. Grace and peace. We abide in that grace. That's what gives us assurance and hope through whatever life throws at us whatever is going on in our lives and in our world God gives us his amazing grace and that grace is all about forgiveness and it's all about uh, helping us and coming alongside us and filling us with his Holy Spirit giving us his favor giving us his continual love in action and being there for us ever every step of our journey and he also gives us his peace his rest that also sustains us and we can abide in that peace 
no matter what. And if you've been a Christian for any length of time, you realize that when we put our faith in Him, when we're going through a tough time and we pray and we acknowledge Him and we turn to Him, sometimes He gives us a peace that really, the Bible says, that surpasses all understanding. And that passage that I'm quoting from in uh, Romans, where later on in Romans, where, uh, sorry, in Philippians, where Paul talks about this peace that surpasses all understanding. It will guard our hearts and our minds. And that's something to realize that in Christ, in God, we aren't left on our own. We are given that peace that peace, that surpassing peace, that peace that is beyond our imagining. And in the midst of the storm, in the midst of a tough time, we can experience God's peace that will guard our hearts and minds, the Bible says. So God bless you today. I just hope that that's an encouragement to you. Stay in the Word and keep mining the Word of God. Keep digging into it. And God will give you these nuggets to keep you going. So I hope you have a great day today. Let's just pray and commit our day to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you for what we have in Jesus. And we thank you as believers in him. We are loved of God. We are called of God. We are chosen. We are elected. We are drawn to him. And we are given the gift of salvation, the gift of a new life and a new creation and a new start. And we thank you, Lord, that continually, as a part of our sanctification process, you give us your grace and your peace. And Paul says this right at the beginning of his letter, just to reassure these Roman Christians that he's writing to. And so, Lord, we pray that you will sustain us and you will Help us to turn to you and abide in you and rest in you whenever we run into difficult times. And so, Lord, we commit our day to you now. We just thank you for this opportunity to get together, and we just pray that you'll be with each one. Draw us close. Meet each need, we pray. And we commit this day to you now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow bright and early on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.